The homes in Iceland are very different from the homes around the world, especially compared to the US, where I'm from. Since you guys have loved some of my life in Iceland videos, I thought it would be fun to talk about the big ways that the homes in Iceland are different. Hi, I'm Jeannie and I've lived in Iceland for eight years, so I've had a lot of time to notice the differences. The homes in Iceland compared to the US. Let's get into it. The first big difference is in the building materials that they use. Picture this. Iceland is built on volcanic fault lines, meaning that there are constant earthquakes, and it's also on an island, meaning that there are high winds from leftover hurricanes. So between earthquakes and hurricane winds, these homes have to withstand a lot of harsh elements. So it's very, very common for these homes to be built with concrete, at the bare minimum. So the most common building material is concrete. This is what's going to be able to withstand some of those harsh rain and wind elements as well as the earthquakes. A lot of homes in the US especially are constructed out of wood. That simply is not gonna stand it in Iceland. They're gonna be blown down or knocked over from the latest earthquake. So huge difference. Overall, a lot of the homes are more of the apartment or flat style. People do live in standalone homes, especially more so in the countryside, but in Reykjavik, where most of the population lives, a lot of people will live in a condo style building. So it's not uncommon for even a family of four or six people to live in one small apartment style home. Moving inside of the homes in Iceland, a huge difference that I've noticed is that they don't use carpet. Everything is either hardwood or stone ceramic floors. In the US, it's very common to have almost all surfaces minus maybe the kitchen or the bathrooms in carpet. In Iceland, they do not do that. Maybe they'll buy a rug for the area, but hardwood. The next major difference of the homes in Iceland is the heating source. Almost all of the homes in Iceland are using geothermal energy, which is a renewable source of energy, very, very commonly sourced in Iceland. This is a really, really big difference compared to, for example, in the US where homes are powered by like natural gas or oil or even electricity. And one of the loveliest things about this is that the floors are commonly heated in Iceland. And it's a huge difference maker, especially with the cold climate, is that the floors are heated, especially in a bathroom or around the laundry room area so that your feet feel warm and therefore your whole body feels warmer. It's just cozier inside because all of the flooring surfaces are hardwood to begin with and now they're heated. It's really, really nice. Another feature that you will probably see, especially in some of the accommodations, is that they have the heated towel racks. This is really nice because now you're just hanging your towel or your rug on the heated towel racks, which helps them dry faster, but also warm up at, for right when you get out of the shower. By the way, before I head on to my next point, if you guys love these Life in Iceland style videos, give me a thumbs up and also let me know in the comments any other topics that you're wanting to see on this channel. Moving on to what I think is the biggest difference, and that is the size of the homes. All right, so in general, Icelanders live in smaller homes all around. This is probably not just unique to Iceland, but it does ring true in Iceland. And I would say one of the main reasons is that building materials are expensive and a lot of things have to be brought to Iceland to build. So that's probably a factor. But one of the things that you might notice is that especially in the city of Reykjavik, a lot of people live in apartment style or condo style homes, meaning that there could be like a four or six story building. And then inside there you have different flats or apartment style homes. So even if you have a family of four to six people, they're living in what Americans would call apartments or condos. This is common to Icelanders and they don't mind living in closer quarters with their families. And so there's not these huge three or four story homes where the family is spread out throughout the house. A big bonus of this smaller space of living is that it is more energy efficient. So you're not having to heat a big, huge 3000 square foot home. Everything is much more contained. Along with this is it's very common to share a garage space. So again, if you have a big shared building, then having an underground parking space, which everyone shares together, is very, very common. 
shared outdoor spaces along the same line. So maybe a lot of people will have a, a little mini park in the middle of their apartment group cluster or have a, a park nearby rather than having everyone has their own individual backyard with their own playset and everything like that. It's efficient. Moving inside the house with size, and this is probably the most shocking as an American moving to Iceland is the size of all the little things like the appliances, noticing things like the refrigerator size, the oven size, the washing machine size. Oh man, there has been so many funny things. When we first moved to Iceland, we did not bring anything other than our clothing. But after living there for several years, we finally decided, okay, we want some of our stuff from the US. So we actually had it chipped over. And when I finally got some of my big kitchen gear in there, it was literally too big for the appliances. Another huge difference is the size of the refrigerator. And so for this, it's like, you can't buy too many groceries because it's not gonna fit. The size of refrigerators in Iceland is roughly half the size of refrigerators in the US. So again, this is a European thing. If you watch um, House Hunters International, this is a common thing that people talk about. The washing machines, like again, half the size, I cannot believe when I go visit my mom how big her washing machine is. I'm like, oh my gosh, you have to do half the amount of laundry that I do. Another thing that you might not notice for traveling in Iceland, but living in Iceland is that uh, a washer and dryer combination is not always standard because there's not space for it. And sometimes the washing machine is in the bathroom rather than in its own standalone room. So that again, like all more space saving situation. <sighs> the joys. The next difference in the homes in Iceland is the design. Homes in Iceland tend to be on the more minimalist and modern spectrum. And I would say that their homes are focused on function and simplicity. This is something that I have really grown to like over the years in comparison to, for example, homes that I know firsthand from the US, which have a variety of design elements like big archways and vaulted ceilings and so many cabinets. <laughs> I'm telling you the things that I have noticed over the years, but in like, it just goes along with the size situation is when you are in a smaller size, your design has to be more functional. Think for example, if you've ever been to Ikea and how creative they get in some of the like spaces and storage organization systems that they have, that's basically because when you shrink down the size of a house, you just have to have some more of that creativity in fitting everything into one space. On top of that, it's just like the decorating style is more minimalist. It's more modern. There's clean lines, muted tones, a lot of natural colors. They're not decorating with word signs everywhere that say home. I don't know. It's a completely different design style. Scandinavian, Nordic, very clean, very minimalist. Two really interesting differences, and this one doesn't really fit under design, but in terms of like going into someone's house, Never wear your outside shoes inside of someone's house in Iceland. Complete difference in the US. I know, for example, like if I walk into my mom's house, she'll be like, oh, just don't worry, just your shoes on. I'm like, but I was just outside and there's like dogs and here you have carpet here and it's gonna be dirty and they don't just, it doesn't matter. But in Iceland, this is like a complete no, do not. In fact, most Icelanders have their, they'll leave their outdoor shoes by the door and they have a separate pair of indoor shoes that they'll take with them around the house, kind of like little slippers. This is not just Iceland. I know a lot of European countries do this as well. And then another thing that I've talked about this in a different video before, but in Iceland, the homes have separate duvets on the bed. As in, you get one and I get one. There's no one big comforter that goes over the bed. Each person gets their own blanket. The next feature that I see completely different in Iceland versus US, landscaping. Wow, oh my goodness. People in the US will spend hundreds or thousands of dollars to have the area outside of their house perfectly landscaped and manicured. Retaining walls, shrubs being trimmed, flowers planted. I don't even know because I've never owned a house <laughs> what all the things are, but there's like, it's like a whole thing, right? It's like your design style, but outside. In Iceland, this is not, this doesn't exist. First of all, usually people don't 
have an outdoor space like that they can do all that with, like I just said, because if you're living in a more condo style building, you don't have your own outdoor space. But also, even if you do have a home in Iceland, um, a standalone home, if you're living in the countryside or you know somewhere where you have a standalone home, not that common, there's usually lava outside. <laughs> like there are places that have grass, but a lot of places are just rugged and you know, you, they'll be there. Your house is built on an old lava field. So there's like lava running through over here and it's just crazy. And so it's, it doesn't lend to keeping your yard perfectly manicured. Grass will grow and become green for a couple of months out of the year, but you know, having these perfectly mowed lawns every couple of days throughout the summer, not important, just totally different. So these are the things that I have noticed over the years. And I hope you guys found this video interesting or helpful. Maybe there's some things that you've noticed on your travels to Iceland. I'd love to hear in the comments below. Alrighty, my friends, I'll see you in the next video, but until then, happy planning.